It's Wednesday, November 28th. We're getting some much needed rain here in Northern California. I'm in the middle of uh, doing a campfire update. The other day we had a break in the weather. I was able to get up and take a look over the devastation of the campfire. I'm putting that video together right now. But today we also got to do a quick update on the Lion Air disaster as we can explain further the new data that's coming out from Indonesia regarding that 737 crash. My name's Juan Brown, you're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and let's go inside where it's a little bit warmer. Just as we suspected, the data that came out from Indonesia is suggesting, or indicating rather, that the crew of Lion Air Flight 610 was struggling with the automation, the relatively new automation feature built into the 737 called MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. On November 22nd, Indonesian officials released the data that showed on the last two flights, as well as the accident flight, they were showing the same issue. The first officer's indicated airspeed showed significantly higher than the captain's airspeed indicator. The captain's AOA indicator indicated about 20 degrees higher than the first officer's AOA or angle of attack indicator. So a huge difference in AOA, angle of attack indicator inputs into the computer. As a result, the left stick shaker activated immediately after takeoff and operated with a brief period where it stopped during a descent shortly after takeoff continuously throughout the flight. In other words, the AOA, the incorrect captain's AOA indicator being 20 degrees off too high is feeding input to the computer while the crew is hand flying the aircraft the computer is thinking the aircraft is in a stalled condition and activates the stick shaker the stick shaker is a very loud noisy uh, stick shaker to alert the pilots that you're in a stalled condition or about to enter a stalled condition you need to lower the nose this also sets off a whole giant warning system of lights Here's what that stick shaker looks and sounds like. There's the actual device. When the aircraft level off at 5,000 feet, automatic nose down trim inputs occurred, which were countered by manual trim up inputs by the crew. The nose down trim inputs were created by the MCAS Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, a tool which will lower the nose of the aircraft to prevent a stall. This is the new MCAS system we're talking about. Until the end of the flight, the automatic nose down trim inputs were countered by manual nose up trim inputs by the crew. During the end of the recording, the automatic nose down trim inputs increased. The pilots still trimmed nose up, however, shorter and shorter little bursts. Overall, the stabilizer trim position moved increasingly towards nose down until it was no longer possible to counter the pitch down moment via the yoke. Throughout the flight, there had been no problems with the engine. The previous flights, two flights, the same problem existed. The automatic trim inputs, however, did not occur. The crew must have done something preventing the MCAS system producing the nose down trim inputs. In the previous two flights, those crew figured out that they needed to turn off the stabilizer trim cutout switches to stop the MCAS system from pushing the nose down. When you train to become an airline pilot, or when you're trained, during emergency procedures training, airline pilots are trained to handle one emergency at a time. This particular scenario introduces effectively a compound emergency, two emergencies at once. For erroneous airspeed indications, we are taught to turn off the automation and establish a known pitch and power setting from memory to regain control of the aircraft. A completely separate emergency is dealing with a runaway elevator trim. The runaway elevator trim emergency procedure has been around for years. It's a very simple procedure. Simply cut out the two 
elevator trim cutout switches. Disconnecting the elevator trim system, setting the brakes, and then manually trimming the aircraft if you are able to, to regain control of the aircraft. Here's a good example of the trim wheels on a 737. These trim wheels are still in place on all the different models, even the latest models of 737. Manually able to control the trim with these wheels. They've got a white stripe in here to uh, indicate when they're spinning. They also make a lot of racket when they're spinning. I'll show you in a second. They also have a little handle stowed away right in here <laughs> so you don't whack your knee on these wheels as they're spinning because they are spinning anytime the elevator trim is trimming. These handles give you the leverage you need to manually turn these trim wheels and adjust the trim to the aircraft if in the event you ever have to manually adjust the trim. Here's the stab trim indicator, green for takeoff, full nose down, full nose up. Note also these are staggered so that uh, if you are manually operating the trim each of you has a different point of leverage to where you can overcome the trim forces to move these wheels. And here's the ever critical stabilizer trim cutout switches that electrically cuts out the stabilizer trim and shuts the system off. That's what they sound like. Note the motion of the stabilizer trim. So they make quite a racket when they're operating, and they're operating all the time. And this is your first indication of a runaway stabilizer trim. Here's the trim wheel located in the latest generation of 737 aircraft. And I should clarify that these trim wheels move while electrically trimming the aircraft under manual flight using the trim switches located on the pilot's yoke. And here's the location of the stabilizer trim cutout switches. A recent emergency AD or airworthiness directive has come out from Boeing and the FAA clearing up this matter about MCAS and is putting Boeing under a lot of scrutiny right now regarding the MCAS system. Do crews of the 737-800 have the information they need to properly understand the MCAS system and how it works and how to turn the darn thing off? A quick review of basic aerodynamics and why elevator trim and the trim system is so important using the E-Flight Radian RC model aircraft, a great model to learn to fly, RC aircraft. First starting with the AOA indicator vanes located on the side of the aircraft. By the way, these AOA indicator vanes are easy to damage with something as simple as hitting them with a jet bridge, for example, or the data may be corrupted going into the computer. The AOA vanes mounted on the side of the fuselage indicate the angle of attack of the aircraft, the difference between the relative wind striking the wing and the mean aerodynamic cord of the wing. That's critical because that's the most accurate way of determining how close you are to stalling the wing of the aircraft. Elevator trim changes the pitch trim of either the stabilizer or the elevator using trim tabs various systems for various aircraft very critical because as you increase speed for example on your wing your wing is going to develop more lift and it's going to want to pitch the nose up of the aircraft on Boeing type transport aircraft with um, high aspect ratio bypass engines mounted underneath the wing as these engines become more and more efficient they become bigger diameter they need to move them a little bit more forward and up <coughs> to clear the ground as you add power to these high bypass engines mounted under the wing that also tends to incur a pitching up moment that also needs to be counteracted with nose down elevator trim the whole idea with elevator trim is to keep the aircraft aerodynamically balanced so as you control the aircraft by hand it is balanced in your hand it does not have an excessive amount of force in your hand that you're having to constantly counteract now I interchange the term elevator stabilizer rather loosely in this presentation. 
In these new highly automated jets with the autopilot on, the autopilot and the automation automatically trims the aircraft. Once you click the autopilot off, that's when the Boeing 737 MCAS system comes into play. And if it senses a stalled condition of the aircraft, it will automatically, through the elevator trim system, drive the elevator trim forward in 10 second intervals to get you to lower the nose of the aircraft. If you counteract that MCAS system with manual trim inputs on the control yoke, you will override the MCAS briefly as you apply your, your electric trim from the yoke. It will delay the MCAS system for five seconds and then the MCAS will continue another 10 second push of elevator nose down trim, counteracting the move of the pilot. So if your computer sensors are getting erroneous information, if even only one of your two AOA indicator sensors on the system as currently designed is giving wrong information to the MCAS system, the MCAS system will take that information while the aircraft is being hand flown and deliver that nose down elevator trim. That system is being reviewed by Boeing as well to add increased additional redundancy. Despite these initial problems with the MCAS system and the new generation of 737 aircraft, overall these automatic features, this automation built into the, today's jets are an overall benefit to everybody. They are doing their job, they are preventing some of the more classic traditional aviation disasters that, 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 that pilots can induce into these aircraft, especially as we see pilot experience go down as the experienced pilots retire and inexperienced levels rise. With this emergency airworthiness directive and what we're learning from this accident, I can tell you there is not a 737 crew member out there that does not clearly now understand how the MCAS system works and how to quickly turn off the MCAS system and resolve the emergency situation that the MCAS may create. Now if this level of technical detail helps you understand the story behind the headlines, hit like and subscribe and feel free to share this video with your friends. When you hit the subscribe button, if you hit the little bell, you'll get instant notifications when I upload new videos like the upcoming campfire overflight. See you here.